Okay, next up we have Eloise Davies. So Eloise is an early career researcher in criminology and she's currently working as a research associate at Lancaster University as part of the Violence, Health and Society Consortium. I'm going to uh, just give a quick overview of um, one of the pieces of work that I've been working on as part of the Vision uh, Consortium. So it's um, looking at um, violent crimes with more than one perpetrator. So when there's more than one assailant, understanding the variation in victims' needs. So just to acknowledge, <laughs> uh, just to acknowledge our funder. Um, so um, a quick background um, to this work. So um, in the crime survey uh, for England and Wales between 2011-12 and 2019-20, more than a quarter of violent crime was perpetrated by multiple perpetrators. So where there was more than one perpetrator involved in one event of violence. Um, so, past research on crime by multiple perpetrators looks at um, mainly the perpetrators and not the victims, so focusing on the group composition, so the age of the group, the gender of the group, and um, the number of perpetrators in the group. Um, and um, they, they find that generally co-offending groups are more often um, same-sex groups of men and they're more often younger than solo offenders. Um, when looking at violent crime specifically, um, there's a discussion about quantity and quality of the violence. So um, quantity refers to the number of violent crimes that uh, groups of offenders commit together and quality looks at the severity of the violence. And um, this research has shown that when um, there's more than one offender, both the quantity and the quality of violence can expect to increase. Um, so multiple perpetrator violent events, um, mostly on the slides as MPVEs, are um, more often severe and um, more often result in injury to the victim. Um, than, and this is compared to single perpetrator violent events. Um, so given the greater severity of crimes perpetrated by multiple perpetrators, we might expect that victims um, more often seek help from various services, and that's what um, I'm looking at in this paper. Um, so previous research on co-offending usually relies on administri administrative data, so data from police, health services, and specialist services. Um, and one of the issues of this is that you only have data on the victims that come to the service. So I'm looking at the using the Crime Survey for England and Wales to compare um, both groups of victims and just get a more comprehensive, uh, comprehensive picture of which victims uh, contact which services. Um, so the paper, uh, the slides say eight years, the paper actually uses nine years of crime survey data from 2011-12 to 2019-20. And I use only victim forms related to violent crime, um, defining violent crime as um, Common assault, serious wounding, um, attempted assault, um, other wounding, uh, um, sexual offences, robbery and attempted robbery. Um, so I don't include threats just because I wanted to look at victims that go to the hospital for treatment, so it made sense to limit it to physical violence only. Um, so this gave 6,838 victim forms that when weighted to the population was 7.65 million victim forms or violent events. And um, there were slightly more victim forms for male victims than female victims, so it's 52% male and 48% female. And 73% um, of the violent events were single perpetrator violent events and 27% were multiple perpetrator violent events. And of the events with multiple perpetrators, 40% had two perpetrators, 
20% had three perpetrators and 40% had four or more perpetrators. So um, this paper has two main research questions. So what are the characteristics of victims of um, multiple perpetrators of violent events and how does this compare to victims of single perpetrators of violent events? And are victims of multiple perpetrators of violent events more or less likely than victims of single perpetrators of violent events to access different forms of services? Um, so the characteristics I looked at um, were limited to age, sex, ethnicity of the victim, and I also looked at victim-perpetrator relationship. And then the services that um, I looked at were Victim Support, which is a national charity in England and Wales that provides support to victims. Uh, it's government-funded and led by volunteers, and they provide um, all sorts of services, so help with accessing other organisations, help with... Help with um, contacting um, places to get compensation and um, other forms of support. <laughs> what was that from? So the, the services that I looked at were victim support, like I said, um, whether the victim reported, no, whether the police were made aware of the incident and um, whether the victim was injured and whether they ended up getting treatment in hospital. Uh, yep, so uh, the first table um, is probably quite small because I know the fonts have been a little bit. Um, so these show the victim characteristics and um, compared to, so single perpetrator violent events and multiple perpetrator violent events. Uh, so I'll start at the top and work down. Uh, where there's um, an asterisk just means that the chi-square test was significant, so there's a significant difference between the two groups. Um, so for male victims of single perpetrator, uh, for sex of the victim of single perpetrator violent events, these were usually fairly even male and female with slightly more male victims than female victims. But for uh, multiple perpetrators of violent events, uh, these were um, majority male victims, so 71%, 72% male victims and 28% um, female victims. And then for ethnic group, it was um, less likely for the victim to be um, white, so there were 13% from minority ethnic groups compared to 9% for the single perpetrator violent event group. Um, and then for age, the age of the victim was generally um, younger than the age for the, multiple, uh, for the single perpetrator violent events. And then um, for relationship to the victim, it was quite a bit less common for the victim to know any of the perpetrators if there was multiple perpetrators involved, um, especially if the perpetrator was domestic relations, so there was, um, there was less than 3% of multiple perpetrators that were a uh, domestic relation to the, the victim. Uh, yeah. So um, I used uh, binary logistic regressions, uh, looking at the four types of contact with services, um, and mainly focusing on the, whether, the, um, whether there was multiple perpetrators or single perpetrators. Um, the, each lo uh, logistic regression model controlled for um, socio-demographics of the victim, uh, relationship to the perpetrator, um, sex, age, um, sex and age of the perpetrator. I didn't include ethnicity of the perpetrator because um, there was quite a lot of missing in this variable with it being victim reported and um, socioeconomic class of the victim. Uh, so for model one, whether the victim contacted victim support, 
Uh, this wasn't significant for whether the, there was a multiple perpetrator or not. Um, for whether the police were made aware of the event, uh, there was a 24% increase for when there was um, multiple perpetrators compared to single um, perpetrators. Um, for whether the victim was injured, there was a 33% increase um, in the odds of injury for victims of multiple perpetrator violent events compared to single perpetrator violent events. And for whether the victim had treatment in hospital, um, the odds of treatment in hospital were double for victims of multiple perpetrator violent events than for uh, victims of single perpetrator violent events. Um, I might have rushed through this a little bit too quickly. Um, but a bit of a um, roundup of um, yeah, what this, um, the main conclusions of this paper. So, um, as most research on um, multiple perpetrators of violent events focuses on the perpetrators and the group composition and the dynamics between the group, um, they tend to use administrative data sources. Um, so, like I said before, health, police records, and specialist services records. Um, and so, this paper that uses the crime survey data shows um, that victims of multiple perpetrators are more likely um, to be injured, to re report to the police, to turn up at the hospital. Um, so, using the administrative data, you might find that you are, um, sorry, I'll try and word that better. So using the administrative data, obviously there's only data on the people that reach the services. Um, so the findings of this paper show that there might be um, an under-representation of victims of single perpetrator violent events in administrative data. So if we're using this data, we should just be aware that there are limits to the coverage. And obviously everybody here, or most people here, will be using the crime survey or a form of crime survey. Um, so it's just an acknowledgement of how valuable this data is and how much it can show us a, a, like more of a whole picture than other data sources, which allows us to make these comparisons. Um, and that's, I finished really early, didn't I? <laughs>